Hello, everybody. Tracy, Mrs. J-Dog Flanagan with you here today. I'm the co-founder and senior vice president at J-Dog Brands. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast, powered by J-Dog and Bet TV. Our podcast gives veterans, male spouses, active military members, and military family members a voice in the veteran space to speak about their service, how they're affecting their communities post-service, and they share with me a tactical treasure that has helped them in their journey in their military career, business, or life. Today, I am so excited to have the amazing pleasure of speaking with Yvonne Coombs, who is an active duty Army mill spouse of 22 years. And in 2020 and 2021, Yvonne was named the Armed Forces Insurance Army Spouse of the Year. And she was also named the Northern Virginia Heroes at Home Overall Honoree in 2019 for her hard work and dedication to the military community as a whole. Yvonne is the proud co-founder and current CEO of Operation Deploy Your Dress, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that redeploys deploys new and gently used formal wear to military dependents in order to improve the quality of life of military families by offsetting the high cost of attending formal military functions, especially for junior service members. Yvonne, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to talk to you about this venture that you're involved with. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to be here, and um, I'm excited to share with you and your audience all about Operation to Play Your Dress. Yes, exciting. Um, first, before we get to that, um, so you're an active duty Army male spouse of 22 years. Thank you for your service, ma'am. Um, and could you talk to us about your husband's service and about your experiences as, as an active duty male spouse? Um, so our journey active duty wise has been all kinds of fun and a little bit of weirdness that's different from some of the normal, normal active duty families. Um, we have PCS, I think 13 times, I don't know, I've lost wow. count, wow. but we've actually gone to Canada twice, which oh. is a little bit different for people. They're always like, how did you get to Canada? And I don't know, the first time was a fluke. And the second time we uh, requested to go back because the first time was so good. So uh, that's, that was our overseas experience. Um, but we've, we've loved it. We loved, we loved every, every minute of that. So um, that's been a little bit of difference. We have two boys, 17 and 25, who have grown up their whole lives um, being army brats, as they like to, wow. as they like to be called, right? And yeah. um, really just trying to, for myself and for the boys especially, just trying to enjoy every place we've been and also impact every place that we've been. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, as you said, you've been almost deployed 13 times, um, or PCS 13 times, excuse me. Um, is there a particular place now, Canada, you did say, um, is there one that stands out to you as a favorite or is very impactful? Maybe there's more than one. You know, absolutely. It, we always try to find the good in everywhere that we go because it's, not always easy to pick up and move and leave your friends behind every you know one to three years but we we often surprise people when i think everybody in the family says that our favorite place we've ever been is fort Irwin, california out in the middle of the mojave desert oh, and wow. <laughs> most people would say they would go kicking and screaming if they um had to be sent out there and i will tell you it wasn't it wasn't um us happily skipping into the gates of Fort Irwin, but we were very, very sad when it was time to leave that place as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard about Fort Irwin. Uh, Jerry, my husband, Army himself, he actually did a tour over there <laughs> for a month over in the Mojave Desert training. So yeah, I've heard all about and, you know, it. I think Hot that's, as heck. <laughs> I think that's where it gets a bad name is a lot of a lot of soldiers go for their one month training and yeah. they're out in oh. the desert and they're, you know, kind of life isn't pleasant during yeah, that one yeah. month that they're out there. But for the families that are stationed out there permanently while their service member is training those, those units that come through, it's actually a pretty magical place, believe it or not. Oh, so, wow. wow. Well, that's great. That's great. Hello, viewers and listeners. Are you a military veteran or a military family member and looking to own your own business? If so, go to jdog.com and check out our two 
veteran-focused franchises, J-Dog Junk Removal and Hauling and J-Dog Carpet Cleaning and Floor Care. Our franchisees nationwide are always looking to hire fellow veterans and patriots. J-Dog is the world's largest military franchise system with hundreds of locations nationwide. We are nearly 90% veteran-owned with the goal of reducing the veteran unemployment rate to under 1%. Check us out. Go to jdog.com to learn more. Now, back to the podcast. Okay, so now, first of all, you're in a very special place. I know. I could see in your background. It's awesome. Um, And you're the CEO and co-founder of Operation Deploy Your Dress. And I believe you are currently in your new location that's getting ready to launch. Um, So tell us uh, the story of how Operation Deploy Your Dress came to be and what it is exactly that you guys do. Absolutely. So Operation to Play Your Dress was kind of dreamed up accidentally, by the way, (laughs) by um, five Army spouses. We were all stationed at Fort Bliss, Texas, which is also a nice hidden gem in the Army. If anybody ever gets sent there, don't go kicking and screaming. You'll be okay. Um, (laughs) We were out at Fort Bliss, Texas, and there were a number of military units having military balls going on. And we were trying to figure out how to help boost the attendance of the spouses to those events right. because they're very important in the military um, to help uphold tradition, to help build camaraderie, make connections. All of those things happen at these, you know, what people like to joke and call adult proms. And so we right. wanted to figure out a way to boost the attendance of the spouses who weren't able to go, not because they didn't want to go, but because they couldn't afford to go. And so right. we thought we would get with our friends and neighbors and collect some dresses and put them in the community center there on post one weekend and offer them up to anybody who had a ball coming up that didn't have a dress and wanted to go to the ball. Um, our goal was 200 dresses and we reserved the community center we were ready to go we started planning putting out word that we were collecting dresses and um, before we knew it we had far surpassed our goal of 200 by collecting 3,000 dresses oh my gosh and um, knew that those dresses weren't going to go away in a weekend so we quickly saw that um We knew the need was there, but the desire to help was also there. And so, you know, spoke to some officials on post who said, hey, use this space that from a a gift shop that had just closed down on post, use this space to give away your dresses, help the community. And when you're done giving away dresses, give us back the key. Well, we realized quickly that those dresses kind of are like rabbits and multiply. And so (laughs) even though we were giving them away, people were still generously donating more dresses and those dresses weren't going to go away anytime soon. And so we um, talked to the local spouses club there at Fort Bliss and said, Hey, would you guys like to team up and provide, continue to provide this service to the community? They said yes. And so from there, operation to play your dress was mini born. Um, After that, we I moved to Virginia and we decided to see if this could work in another location or if it was kind of just special to Fort Bliss. So we deployed Operation Deploy Your Dress to Virginia with me as I moved. And um, again, it was it was a success. And from there, we just kind of continued to wash, rinse and repeat. And today, as you said, I'm in our newest shop here in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And we are about to tomorrow have the grand opening of shop number 14. Wow, that's so exciting. Um, And in hearing about everything that you're doing, um, the ladies here at J-Dog HQ, we collected about 10 dresses and I think four pairs of shoes and ship them off to your new event. And I hear that they've arrived. We're so excited and so proud to be able to uh, support uh, your mission and what you're doing. I just, I think it's just amazing Um, because it's true. You know, um, you want to support your spouse, right? And, you know, you want to, you want to look pretty and special in that dress and, you know, if it's a decision as to what food shopping and and going to the party and getting a dress and they're not cheap. I mean, um, you know, evening gowns are not cheap these days. So um, I think it's 
I just think it's an amazing idea. I love it. And how many times do you just get a dress and buy it for a special occasion or a wedding or something or a black tie event and maybe you never wear it again, you know? So um, I, I love it. It's a great idea. Awesome. Awesome. You know, um, that's something that we've run into many times where people have reached out to us and they've said, we're so excited to hear about you. I've had this dress hanging in my closet and, you know, it was the dress that I wore to my son's wedding as the mother of the bride or the dress that I wore to this special event. And so they have some sort of emotional connection to that dress, rightfully right. so, that they don't want to just take it to a thrift store and drop it off. Sure. But when they hear about the impact and maybe the memories that can now be made again in that dress through somebody else, they're very excited to be able to support. They're very excited that we've given them a way to, um, to, support the troops as as many people sure. like to say yeah. and so they're very happy to be able to support yeah. and send those dresses to us that's great that's great and so now you're doing a special event to open up this uh, 14th location correct tell me about your little special event that you're doing tonight as you open the doors so all of our grand openings, except during COVID, you know, COVID liked to throw a wrench in some of our grand openings. Of course, we did continue yeah. to open shops, but we weren't able to do the events the same way. But the way our grand openings usually work is we have what we call a sip and see the night before the grand opening, where we um, invite a lot of community leaders from both inside and outside of the gates to come in and see the location, hear about the program and gain all of the information and knowledge that they need about Operation to Play Your Dress so they can take it back to their families, to the units that they support and help spread the word so that this is a resource that continues to be used. Because a lot of times we have resources in the military, but if they don't, if nobody knows about them, nobody uses them. Sure, so this sure. is our, our way of saying, here you go. This is, you know, we, we named it a sip and see because in the South, a sip and see is what people do when they have a new baby oh, and they okay. want to introduce their new baby to their friends and family and their community. Well, each shop is kind of like our new baby. So we're introducing our new baby here at Fort Leonard Wood this evening to the community here in this area. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> sip and see. That's great. Um, so how can people, um, how if they have dresses or um they want to you know maybe get a neighborhood together and say hey you know let's let's i heard about this great organization let's help them out how would they go about getting the dresses to you and um do do you take donations of money as well or how does that all that work absolutely so First of all, free dresses doesn't exactly bring in a lot of money. So we always welcome monetary donations to help do what we do and continue to support military families. Secondly, if there are friends, neighbors, families, anybody that wants to get together and collect dresses and donate them, they can then go on to our website, which is operationdeployyourdress.org. They can click on the locations link. And from there, it will list all of our locations, all of the mailing addresses and ways to um, send those those donations to our shops. They can find the shop that's closest to them or if they don't care where they send them to, if they don't if they don't have a preference on which location they send them to, then we often will have the location that's most in need at that time listed so that they can then pack them up and send them to that location. Okay, great. And it, is it a, a physical location? Because I know when we tried to send ours via to a PO box. It was very difficult because we had a very large box. Um, but there are, are there actual physical address locations, not PO boxes? So some of the shops have actual physical locations. So they can just go through there and find the shop that has an actual physical location. And some of the shops because, um, you know, we're again dealing with free dresses. Sure. And so we have to deal with whatever, um, space and buildings that the post has available available for us to use the the installation has available for us to use not all um buildings receive mail so that's why some of the shops have to have a p.o box, PO box. but okay. if there is a location that you're really wanting to support they have a p.o box you can also reach out to us and we can often 
reach back to one of our volunteers and say, hey, somebody wants to send dresses specifically to your location. Can you provide us with a physical mailing address? And oftentimes they'll just have them sent to their home or something. But our volunteers are all military spouses and they change over so often. We don't list those addresses. And also for their privacy, we don't list their addresses on our website. But many times they'll say, yep, go ahead, have it sent here. And they'll give us, you know, they'll come up with a physical address for us. Right, right. Understood, understood. Um, That's really awesome. I love it. Hello, viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast, where we are currently speaking to Yvonne Coombs, who is an active duty Army male spouse of 22 years. And she is also the CEO and co founder of Operation deploy your dress, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that redeploys new and gently used formal wear to military dependents and military ID card holders. Operation deploy your dresses. Primary goal is to improve the quality of life of military families by offsetting the high cost of attending formal military functions, especially for junior service members. If you are a male spouse and or military service member in need of formal wear or wedding gown, you can go to Operation Deploy Your Dress dot org to find out more info and to see all of the shop locations that Operation Deploy Your Dress operates out of. And if you are a civilian, you can help support the cause by donating your gently used formal wear and accessories. And also, if you would like to just donate a monetary contribution. They need all the help that they can get. Just head to operation deployyourdress.org to fill out the donation form. Now back to the podcast. Let's dive into your tactical treasure. Uh, this is a tactical treasure podcast, by the way. <laughs> I could talk <laughs> about the dresses all day long. Um, what would you like to share with us today? Um, I think my biggest tactical treasure just for military spouses, this one's going to be directly for military spouses, is um, enjoy the ride, but don't lose yourself in in the ride, right? I think for, for me, um, I had been a military spouse for like 15 years before starting Operation Deploy Your Dress with, with my friends and neighbors. And that kind of gave us all something that was just ours. It wasn't dependent on what our service members MOS was or what their unit was or who their commanding general was. It was just us doing this for our community and for the military spouses and family members in our community. But it was able, we were able to kind of just wrap our hands around this and not have to worry about anything else but what we were, what we were doing in that moment. So it's, it's kind of nice. I joke around because my husband was stationed at the Pentagon about three, two and a half, three years into operation to play your dress. And um, he came home on the Metro from the Pentagon with some dresses that somebody had brought to his (laughs) office to deliver to him. And he said, I was called Yvonne's husband today. And it was at that (laughs) moment that I'm like, yep, I have arrived. I am no longer <laughs> just, not just, but just Major Coombs's wife or Lieutenant mm-hmm. Colonel Coombs's wife. Yeah. I am now the dress girl and you are Yvonne's husband. So <laughs> that is it's just great. It's kind of a great moment whenever yeah. you're able to regain a little bit of an independent identity for a moment. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> what a great story. <laughs> I love it. Um, so... That I love your tactical treasure, and that's also kind of a piece of advice for your fellow male spouses. Um, would you have any other little nugget of advice for male spouses that might be kind of struggling with that lifestyle and balancing all the different aspects of their lives? Yeah, I think, and I've used this uh, many times with people before, and that is find the golden nuggets wherever you are. I think um, sometimes you kind of get down in the dumps because you were hoping to get stationed in Hawaii and you got stationed in the middle of the desert or something, or you were hoping to go overseas to Europe and you had to stay in wherever, you know, don't get wrapped up in wishing away 
two years of your life because you're being sent someplace that you didn't want to go. Like stop and really try and find those golden nuggets wherever you are. I think it's going to make your life a lot better uh, because it's really hard to be sour grapes for two to three years. And it's also going to let you see some things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise if you were too busy having a storm cloud over your head. So Mm -hmm. the army, the military in general is unpredictable. Don't try to, or don't get upset whenever what you predicted doesn't happen roll with the punches, find the golden nuggets, and just enjoy the ride. Right. I heard it said that the best thing to do is to grow and flourish wherever you're planted. I've heard a male spouse say that as well. Um, That's great advice. Um, Yeah, life is too short to, you know, kind of wish, wish, wish and be miserable. Um, Why not make the best of it and try to, like you say, find that golden nugget? That's great advice. Um, well, I am so excited for your event tonight and, um, I hope it goes really, really well. Um, but before you can go, can you tell us how people can find and connect with you, um, and how they can find out more information on Operation Deploy Your Dress? So Operation Deploy Your Dress, you can find us, um, on our website at operationdeployyourdress.org on Instagram at ODYD1, on Facebook at Operation Deploy Your Dress, or um, every single one of our shops where we're located. So Fort Leonard Wood dash Operation Deploy Your Dress, Fort Bliss dash Operation Deploy Your Dress. Every single shop dash Operation Deploy Your Dress has their own Facebook page as well. Um, oh, that's great. And I think that's I think that's all the places that I, did I answer all the questions? What if people want to reach out to you and connect? Can they find you on LinkedIn? Absolutely. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I believe it's Yvonne Coombs, just under Yvonne Coombs. Might be Yvonne Loza Coombs. But yes, I am definitely on LinkedIn. You'll see my face. (laughs) (laughs) So definitely on LinkedIn. Also on Instagram at ev underscore Coombs. Okay. Awesome. Well, Yvonne, thank you so much for coming on and sharing um, your amazing work and your vision and your passion. It's just infectious. I love it. Um, and we, the ladies of J-Dog, were so happy to be able to help um, stock up your dresses at your new location in Fort Leonard Wood. So, um, yeah, I think it's awesome. You're doing great work. Doing great well, work, I hope girl. to have some pictures to send you of those dresses being deployed very soon. Oh, that would be really awesome. We would love to see that. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you and all the work you're doing. It's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. You as well. Bye-bye now. Bye. Hello, viewers and listeners. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast. We have just finished a wonderful conversation with Yvonne Coombs, who is an active duty Army mill spouse of 22 years and the co-founder and current CEO of Operation Deploy Your Dress, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that redeploys new and gently used formal wear to military dependents and military ID card holders. Operation Deploy Your Dresses' primary goal is to improve the quality of life of military families by offsetting the high cost of attending formal military functions, especially for junior service members. If you are a mill spouse and or military service member in need of formal wear or a wedding gown, you can go to Operation deployyourdress.org to find out more info and to see all of the shop locations that Operation Deploy Your Dress operates out of. And if you are a civilian, you can help support the cause by donating your gently used formal wear and accessories, and also monetary contributions are accepted as well. Go to operationdeployyourdress.org to fill out the donation form. Thanks for tuning into this episode of 
Tactical Treasures. And don't forget, you can find our podcast on all your favorite podcast streaming platforms, as well as Vet TV. We are now airing on Reese Across America Radio on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern. And if you missed us, there's an encore airing at 1 p.m. Saturdays, Eastern Time. You can also find Reese Across America Radio on the iHeartRadio app, the Odyssey app, and the TuneIn app. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time on another podcast. Bye-bye now.